Welcome back, Ligari Nation. Today we're showing you a new technique that you can do with epoxy along with a new Ligari tip. There are so many looks and designs that you can get with our products. To order yours today, check the description below. Now let's get started. Hey guys, before we get started, I want to give you a little Ligari tip that works amazing before you do your projects and also when you're doing your top coats. So what I have here is a Scotch-Brite lint roller, obviously a big one. It's kind of like a paint roller. Works great for getting any debris, dust, uh, hair, lint roller, anything that you have on your board before you guys coat them. And then same goes with after maybe you've sanded, you're doing your final flood coat, your top coat run over your, your project with one of these lint rollers and it'll pick up any debris, anything that's left over that's gonna mess up your surface. We clean this board and I'll show you the stuff that'll get up still after cleaning your board. A lot of times like rags and stuff will leave lint behind, stuff that's gonna mess up your project and not get that epoxy to level out glass smooth. So we'll just go over the board. So we're just hitting it real quick. And obviously having a lint roller this big will make it go very fast. And then you can see all the debris chunks that it's picked up. We got a bunch of lint, lint hairs on here from the rag we cleaned it with. Just all kinds of stuff. And we can also use this on our edges. All right, so I'll pull this sheet off and show you what we got here. Here's the lint um, roller with nothing, right, brand new. After using it on the wood, we got fibers from the um, cloth that we used to clean it with, and we got a bunch of sawdust leftover stuff from, from the actual wood. So this, this is stuff that would end up in your epoxy, um, in your top coats. So this stuff, this, this trick works really well for uh, cleaning your surfaces right before you do your coatings. All right, so we're basically ready to mix. I want to talk about the tape. When you guys are taping your edges off for like the, our, our stone kit process or dirty pour process, and you're coating a thin half inch MDF board or something thin, the tape's not going to stick well there. So what I like to do, and sometimes this doesn't mean you're not going to have any blowouts or anything, but this helps, is I'll tape half of the tape hanging off the top and half on the bottom so I can fold it under. So I fold it under half of this tape under here to get a good seal. And then when I, when I pressed on my edges, I actually sealed it onto the top too. So I can get a better seal. There's more spot to seal to. And it's okay if the tape's overhanging in. We're just trying to create a barrier to minimize resin flowing off of there. So I'll go around and I'll tape the top edge just a little bit on the flat part, just like this. And then we have a pretty good seal there. But again, it doesn't guarantee you're not gonna have any blowouts, especially when you're coating thin boards like this. Counters, inch, 
inch and a half, two inch thick edges, no problem. It's only on these smaller type boards. All right, so we got five colors. And then what I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna be trying to mimic uh, an elevation topography map, right? So it just shows all these crazy designs and layers and elevations, but in a Ligari stone kit process. So how I'm gonna do it, we have these large ketchup bottles right here. So I'm gonna be doing my dirty pour into these with different colors. And then I'm gonna do a bunch of little lines all over this board um, and we'll see how it looks. I think it's gonna look really cool, um, but I've never done it, so it should be fun. I got my metallic epoxy clear here. Everything's ready to go. So I'm gonna pour this product into a bucket and start mixing it. And then I have my five containers here that I can do all the colors in. And then I'll be pouring out of these into the ketchup bottle. And then that's how we're gonna apply it to the board. All right, so another Ligari tip for you guys. When the resin's really cold, it's gonna be really thick. It's not gonna wanna drain out of these very fast. One option is setting your jugs in warm water. Fill up a five gallon bucket with warm water. You just don't wanna make, you wanna make sure the water doesn't go above the, the cap of the epoxy jug. Let it sit in there for 10, 15 minutes, shake the jug up, um, and that'll, that'll warm that up a little bit so it's not so cold. Um, you just wanna make sure you don't get it too hot to where it's just gonna flash off on you. Um, it's always good to have a temp gun. Try to get that resin about 70 degrees. The other option is just take a heat gun and when you're, when you're draining it out, you can just kind of heat up the jug. It'll start to drain this product a lot faster. So you can see how much faster it's draining now. And then once it starts to drip on you, start dripping instead of steady streams. We can put the cap on and add the hardener. All right, now we're gonna take a paddle mixer, mix this for two to three minutes, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom. We do recommend using a secondary mixing container. So once you've mixed it for about one and a half minutes, two minutes, dump it all into a new container, mix for another 30 seconds to a minute. That'll ensure you don't have any soft spots. I'm just gonna mix in this container, scrape the sides really well, scrape the bottom. Um, but when you guys are doing your projects, it's always good to pour into another container. And we have a lot of videos showing that in all of our tutorials go over that mixing process. All right, so now when you're mixing multiple colors, start with the lightest one first, work your way to the darkest. Um, so we're gonna go with the silver first, put this drill on low speed, always hold your containers.
All right, so another Lagarde tip for you guys to keep your paddle wheels clean. Have a bucket handy. We have denatured alcohol in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin the majority off of the drill high speed in, in this bucket, and then I'll clean it in here, put the lid back on, and I can reuse that multiple times. So we'll put this on high speed. Get the majority of it off. Go back to low speed. And we're just gonna mix it in here for a minute. I like to go forward and back a couple times. And then once we got it clean, high speed, and then we have a nice and clean drill. I just have to wipe off the shaft here. And this will help from having to buy new ones of these, or even when they get epoxy caked on and dried on there, they start to chip off. It's just a pain in the butt. So now I have another clean wheel that I can use next time. And then we'll put the cap on here. We've labeled it denatured. So this is our clean out bucket for all of our paddle mixers. All right, now we're gonna start making an even bigger mess here. That's half of the fun, right? Oh, I was gonna show you guys how to know if you have enough color. I know I do, but the easiest way, once you add the metallics and mix them, dip a paint stick, let it kind of drain for a minute, then hold it flat. See how it's not really translucent, you can't see through it. So I got enough pigments in there. That's the easiest way to make sure you have enough pigment. And I've showed in the past videos, you guys can map out your designs of what to follow with the Sharpie. Even running the edge of a paint stick will kind of scar the primer where you can see a line to follow. But we're gonna go at this one kind of blind here. All right, so I'm just gonna start, start doing a design. These would basically be the highest peaks of the elevation. And then they're gonna kinda supposedly go down from there.
All right, so I went around all the edges, made sure epoxy's everywhere. You can kind of see the tape's kind of falling off, but it's not necessarily leaking because we taped, we pushed that tape underneath the board as well. But again, guys, I mean, this board's real skinny. Like I said before, it's hard to get tape to stick to that skinny little board. So that's the best way to do it. So instead of doing isopropyl, I don't want to really make these crater out and sell out. I'm just going to mist it with denatured alcohol so we can keep this same exact look. All right, so you guys just make sure when you pull the tape, you don't let it set up too much. You want that to flow over a little bit. We had a few run spots, you can kind of tell some of the product kind of ran in a few areas, um, but the design's still there. And that's the point of taping it off, trying to keep it from running and moving because you want to keep that same pattern. This turned out really, really cool. We have a lot of these elevation lines that you would see in that elevation topography. So this, this was a total success. Um, and then last thing we need to do is just scrape the drips off the bottom. We'll just use a simple paint stick for that. Clean off the drips so that we, we don't have to sand those tomorrow. And we'll show you guys this when it's all done.